So I've been watching the Microsoft press conferences and I got to the one about HoloLens, which is their new product that you can wear like glasses and it projects a augmented reality over the real world. So it got me thinking, that'd be really cool to have just in your house and because this product is probably going to be extremely expensive, I thought, I wonder how hard it is to actually make your own augmented reality setup. And it only took me probably two and a half hours of programming and stuff, but I found a really cool tool that sped up the process a lot and allowed me to create an Android app that using this tracking zone, I can create an augmented reality on top of it in here. And the really cool thing about this is I don't have to use this image. I could say attach a little circle to my hand with some colors in it and hold it like this and it show a fireball in my hand. I'm just using this because it's big and easy for the phone to find and it makes things simpler for recording this video. Now I have my Android phone here. It's going to be a bit complicated as we have to use my Android phone as well as hold the camera at the same time. So if you see this thing here, it just shows what we're seeing. So there's a fridge, fridge, nothing too fancy. And up here we have something that says focus, focus camera. Well, it says Mia, and over there it says Earth. What I can do is hold this over here, and boom. Earth is now being projected through my phone onto the real world. And you can walk around this thing, and it remembers its position. So right now we're looking at North America, and we can travel over here to Europe and Asia's down here. Uh, there is a sun, so it does look a bit odd. This camera is not wanting to focus at all. But we can walk away, and I think you can get to, like, yeah, about here before it starts freaking out. But what it's pretty much doing is it's looking at this image, and it's saying, okay, there's a point there, a point here, Point here, a point here. I'm now going to project the Earth in the center of those and in position to those so it always remembers it. So we can walk around and it remembers which way you're facing. You can also do this by rotating the paper, but I'm kind of out of hands so I can't rotate the paper. But if we did rotate the paper, like, okay, here, I'm just going to, we're looking at North America now. Set my phone down, you see it loses because I can't see it anymore. We rotate this paper like this. Pick it back up. We're now looking at a different part of the Earth, even though we are in the same position we were with life. Now, if we rotate over here, it's back to North America. So I'm just going to rotate this back again. And I thought, oops, that's cool and all, but what would be really cool is if you could have some kind of 3D person. So over on the phone where it says Mia, I'm just going to tap that to enable it. And now it gives me two new options, dance and fight. And now we go over here, Mia appears. And Mia is a 3D model I found. And right now she's in idle position. So it's hard to see on this video right now. But she's simply just sitting there and swaying back and forth. And if we do the same thing, it works just like the previous one, where if you look away, it goes off. Now I'm just going to rotate this so that we have a slightly better view. Okay, this is incredibly hard to forward. But so here, yeah, I can't do that. So there's Mia. And this is cool, because it's pretty much just working just like how the Earth worked, but this isn't anything fancy. So I thought, what if we can make Mia dance? So I have this button down here. It says dance, and it will, whoops, let me do Gangnam Style. If we tap it, me will start dancing. You can walk around. And you see, Mia can leave the sheet of paper. That's something I was wondering about when I was programming it. If they leave the paper, what happens to it? And I found out that the way that this positioning system is working is it's just tracking from a point right here 
So as long as the camera can see that point, Mia can go anywhere. So like you can see, I can still see her foot there because we can still see the point of origin. If we move away, she disappears. And I'm going to show you that one more time. Dancing on the table. And we can walk all the way around and she stays where she is. And then something else I found is this fight. So she's going to do a fighting move. Maybe like that. She, she does a backflip, she runs forward, she punches. Um, she kind of teleports back into position because I haven't made an animation for that yet. But this really demonstrates her leaving the sheet completely and still remaining flat with the table, which is something that uh, is also cool about how it keeps the orientation to this sheet of paper right here. So if she leaves here, she'll still remain on the same flat level as this original sheet of paper. Um, so I'm just going to show that one more time. Sorry, it's kind of blurry, but uh, I'm looking at a phone through a phone. And this is it. So now if we slow this back down and we click back on Earth, the option goes away. Now when we pick it back up, Earth is now displayed again. There was originally a version of this where you could rotate Earth by moving your hands across it, but I found out that when you looked away, because it was now updating rotation, the Earth would just be stuck in its last known position. And that didn't really look right because you move away and it's supposed to show nothing, but it still show Earth. And something really cool about this is you can use, I'm just going to set this down for now. I currently just made this in Photoshop really quick as a very fast tracking zone. You can use pretty much anything you want as the tracking zone. So something I was thinking when I was programming this is, say you're playing a game like Magic or Pokemon, you could make a tracking zone of your Pokemon cards. So when you play that, a 3D model of your Pokemon appeared. And if you had a custom field set up, you could have it so that when you both played it, you created a 3D model of your Pokemon. And from your phone, you could select what attack you're going to use. And they'd interact with each other inside the apps. You could have a truly immersive game. And this is just what I've been working on. I think it's pretty cool. And I'm going to continue to work on it and update it. And I'm thinking of putting something like this on my robot for a competition so that we have some kind of custom thing that you can only see through the app. Uh, this app is not public. It's currently only on my phone. And I made it today. So this is my augmented Aug dang it, I forgot to say the word, augmented reality prototype I've been working on, and it's pretty cool. Oops. So this is it.